Hello, I'm Michael Pascoe. It's Monday, January 27. The start of a short week here, but one that's likely to be plenty long enough for market fun and games as the wobbles go through the system, some of them more bemusing than others. And while some markets jump at shadows over China's strength and take more notice of a few troubled states than they deserve, there is a Federal Reserve Board meeting on Wednesday night that might nudge the tapering game on a bit more, while domestically there's the NAB reading of business conditions tomorrow. But the main game will be the increased volatility in just about all the markets. So let's start there. On Friday afternoon, I went in search of a graph I had previously used to demonstrate how Chinese industrial production growth remained a healthy 9% or so, despite the PMI being below 50. In the process, I found a story I wrote about it in June 2012, and much the same sort of thing in June 2013. Yes, deja vu all over again. It's astounding that the markets are using the PMI excuse for another wobble. But don't listen to me on this one. Here's what AMP strategist and chief economist Shane Oliver is saying in his weekly commentary. Quote, While uncertainty regarding China is high at present, not helped by the lack of transparency from the People's Bank of China regarding its periodic liquidity squeezes, there are several reasons not to be too concerned. First, Chinese growth is still exceptionally strong. For example, GDP at 7.7% year-on-year, industrial production at 9.7% year-on-year, and retail sales at 13.6% year-on-year. Second, the growth readings in the PMI have been bouncing around in the same range for the last two years now, and since growth is just above the Premier's growth floor of 7%, it would appear the government is happy with this. Finally, there are no signs of the sort of excesses that normally presage a sharp collapse. Inflation is low, the trade balance is in surplus, China is a global creditor, public debt is low by US, European, Japanese, Indian and Brazilian standards, and property prices are up but not out of line with urban income growth, which is running around 10% year on year. End quote. I couldn't have said it much better myself. One of these days, the markets will get used to the idea that Chinese growth of around 7% is actually just fine and dandy. But for now, we'll just have to ride the volatility. And then there are the really silly headlines, throwing up the falling currencies of Argentina, Turkey and Ukraine as examples of some kind of broader disaster in emerging markets. Forex markets are forever difficult. But the three countries being cited all have political problems ranging from bad to disastrous and don't represent overall emerging markets. Ukraine's crisis is being seen on the streets. Turkey is undergoing a political struggle of its own with the president turning increasingly despotic. And Argentina, well, having just done some on the ground research, or at least having a holiday there, is a tragedy in its own right and a warning about what a succession of lousy governments can do to what should be a wealthy nation. Argentina is going down the tubes and its people know it. The government has no credibility and neither does the peso. Inflation is running close to 25% and Mrs Kirshner simply denies it, lies about it. It's absurd. But Argentina does not represent the emerging world. The Federal Reserve Board on Wednesday might well decide to take its tapering another step, perhaps cutting back the printing presses from $75 billion a month to $65 billion. This process should further support the greenback, which will continue to cause a reordering of other currencies and is a factor in commodity gyrations. Our dollar dipped under 87 US cents over the weekend is still there this morning. Gold has just recorded five weeks of gains in a row, while iron ore prices have fallen in US dollars for three weeks in a row. But it's worth remembering the impact of the Aussie dollar's fall has on all this. It's been particularly kind for local gold bugs and has supported iron ore miners' income even as the price of rust has come off. But the gold price performance is likely to be a temporary rally. Cutting back on tapering eventually should help burst what's left of this chapter of the gold bubble. It promises to be an interesting week, just like all the others. Talk to you Friday.